Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Viceroy. And I gotta say right up front, this is a great, great game. Um, Jen and I really enjoy this game a lot. Not only is the art stunningly gorgeous, every single card is just beautiful to look at. And you know, the game as you play it out on the board is so bright and colorful and cheery and wonderful. Um, you know, it just puts a smile on your face. And it's so satisfying building these pyramids and thinking, making both long-term and short-term decisions because you have to build a stronger base to be able to build up. Which level are you going to build each of these guys? Do you have the money to do it? But to get the guy you have to spend a red and then you won't have the red you need to actually put him in position but you can put him in a different turn, you can save up. You can get more of these laws that have, you know, pretty substantially significant game-changing effects. And then at the end of the game, there are just so many things. You, uh, I, I could, you know, go through the list. You score points for how many perfect circles you got. You score points for the set collection. You score points for, um, you know, magic. You score, I mean, there's just so much stuff. So many avenues. So many paths to victory. And, but it's so simple and clean and elegant. This is just a wonderful, wonderful game. From first-time designer, Russian guy, whose name is probably on here, and I don't know how to read his name. And I'm very, very sorry. I'm going to assume his name is Vladimir. Um, I'll, I'll put his, you know, there's his name right there. First time designer. I remember I did look that up because first time I played this, I thought, wow, this is so good. I expect this to be coming from like a really practiced seasoned de designer, but this was his first thing. And we absolutely loved it. Um, Jen, when we did start playing it, did suffer for the first few rounds from some really hugely crippling analysis paralysis, AP. But that was because she was overthinking everything, trying to plan four or five or six turns in advance based on what was available on the board so that she could always be making the perfect circles. Um, you know, because they can be worth a lot of points at the end of the game. But then when she realized, well, if you have excess money at the end of the game, you, it's worthless to you unless you've got broken circles. And, you, and if you do have broken circles, you, that's why the excess money you have left over goes to patch those holes. So if you build perfect, perfect circles throughout the entire game, you're really kind of screwing yourself unless you can be so good that you end the game with no excess money because you'll have no use for it. But as soon as she realized she could patch the holes later, things just started really singing. Because you only get to get one card every turn. Um, you get to build up to three of them every turn. You get to the point where you're pretty much either like what you just saw in the extended playthrough. Jen was actually saving up several cards so she was going to have a really big build turn all at once. Or I was just kind of drip feed building building my pyramid bigger and bigger. But you just have so many different avenues to explore, so many different strategies to pursue. I was really surprised by this and liked it a lot. And so like I, said, I was trying to think of stuff we didn't like about it. And at first, Jen was a little AP worried. But when she realized that she was actively hurting herself, you want to have some holes to plug at the end with your excess money, then, I mean, you know, it, it just starts, it just clicked for her. And she, who is a very, very AP prone player, was able to play this fast and smooth as I was, because I'm a very intuitive player. And we both had a great time. And when it's all over and you get to sit back and look at your pyramid and look what I built, and you, know, you focus on radically different things, really, really great stuff. So really, about the only uh, negative thing I can say about this game right now is, it's just not available in English. If you're in Russia, you can buy this. You can buy the Russian version of this in hobby stores right now. And I don't know. I don't really think I have a, much of a presence in Russia. But anybody in Russia right now, get this game. It is amazing. This is gonna. Um, this is probably Hobby World's game of the year, as far as I'm concerned. Like I said, Hobby World is a very, very successful Russian board game publisher, and they publish other stuff in English. And so I asked them when they sent me this. You know, because they said they said basically. Um, you know, they wanted me to do a video of it because they're planning on demoing it at Essen, but not sell it. Although, although, again, you can buy the Russian version, but you can't. there aren't very many copies of the English version out there yet. And I asked them, well, what are your plans? Are you going to do a Kickstarter campaign? Are you going to publish this? Because like I said, they publish other stuff in English. Are you going to do co-publishing with somebody else? And they said, right now, we know we've got a great game, and we're just taking it slow. We just want to start to try and um, you know, gauge consumer interest and make the right choice. So right now, they're just trying to get into hands of a lot of players in, in demo situations or you know, through my run-through. So that 
a buzz can start to build about it and they can decide if they want to do their first Kickstarter or if they just publish it straight. If maybe they don't need to do a Kickstarter because there's enough interest and excitement about it, they can just go straight to publishing. And I think that's actually really smart. Um, you know, so really, even though this is a full-on run-through, and I gotta say, Jen and I, we love and love, love this game, it really is kind of more of a preview because this is a game that chances are you can't get. But if you're going to Essen this year in 2014, you can certainly play it. And I definitely strongly suggest you head over to Hobby World's booth and play a round or two. And then actually after you fall in love with it like we did, try to convince them to get the English version out as soon as possible because more people should be able to play this game because it's just awesome. And that's about it, folks. Uh, that is Viceroy. Hope you enjoyed this run through. Any questions, comments, concerns, as always, let me know. Otherwise, hope you have a very nice day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.